Okay, today we're going to talk about simple versus compound interest. Um, this is the interest you earn when you invest money uh, into a bank account or the interest you pay when you're uh, loaning money. Uh, and there are two different ways for it to be calculated and we're going to look at both of them and see which one's better. So <clears throat> before we do that though, we need to remind ourselves a little bit about the percents um, that we'll need to use to calculate interest. So remember the word percent means per cent and the per is out of and cent meaning 100. So like centurions means uh, someone who's in charge of 100 soldiers is a centurion or centennial means uh, 100 years. So that's where the cent comes from. The per, of course, we've heard about that kilometers per hour is out of. So when we see percent, it's out of 100. So 25% here means 25 out of 100. And if you divide 25 divided by 100, then of course we get 0 .1, 0 0.25. Now, because we're dividing by 100 every single time, you can do a little bit of easy math in your head and <clears throat> move the decimal place from here, left two spots to get our 0.25. Since we're multiplying, dividing by 100, we would move it left two spots to get that. So you can imagine in your head moving this left two spots to get for 10% to get 0.12 or move 33.3, move that two decimal places to the left and we get 0.333 as the decimal we would use. Now be careful on this one. If you go to move it two decimal places to the left, well, there's no number here. So you move it a second one, there's a zero. And now this becomes, your decimal has now moved there and it now becomes 0 0.05. So that's one that, we got to be careful of when it's 5%, it's 0 0.05. Often the mistake that people make is they see 5% and they say it's 0 0.5. Well, 0 0.5 is actually 50% and that's not what we want. So I feel confident that you're able to convert percents into decimals and that's going to be important when we're actually doing the calculations. For example, here, when I wanted to find 25% of 40, we're going to take the 25% and convert that to a decimal. Of means times and then we get 40. So 0.25 times 40, we can punch into our calculator and see that that's 10. Now, I understand you might be able to do this differently. So for example, 25% is a nice easy percent. It's a quarter of what you want. And if you have 40, then it's really easy to say a quarter of 40 is 10. And that's great thinking. But of course, when the numbers get more challenging, like 33, 36% or 13%, that's not as easy to logically think your way through it. So having this strategy of converting it to math, translating this English statement into math is gonna be really valuable. So 36% changes to 0.36 times 25. And now we just punch that in our calculator and we get nine. Or 13% is 0.13 times 550. And we get that that's 71.5. So this strategy is going to be easier when we're doing percentages that are a little more complicated, like 13 or 2.9%. You hear that on the TV all the time. It's much easier to understand the, how to translate it into decimals and do the math this way. Now, what we're going to do is go off and look at an investment of $1,000 into a GIC that will earn me 10% interest every year. Now, what's a GIC? A GIC stands for a Guaranteed Investment Certificate. It means that you will uh, give your $1,000 to the bank. They will give you a Guaranteed Investment Certificate that says, I guarantee you that you will get 10% uh, at the end of the year, interest at the end of the year. Now, for starters, you should know a GIC, there aren't too many that will get you 10% per year. There are some pretty good performing ones, but usually the bank gives you a much lower one, maybe something like one or 2% per year. And um, you might wonder why the bank does this. Like, why would they say, oh, we'll keep your $1,000 for a year and we'll give you 2% interest? Well, because the bank will take your, in, your money, your investment, plus all the investments of other people, and take that money and invest it in something else where they might be able to earn more than 2% because they have a bigger pool of money. They're going to make a little bit more money. So they don't mind giving you a guaranteed investment certificate, but it is a little risky for the bank because maybe they're going to invest in something that tanks and they might lose some money, but they've given you a guaranteed investment of this.
So that's why they don't really give you a huge return on an investment like this, but um, some, some of them will give you a pretty good one. But for our purpose, for this example, we're going to pick this $1,000 into a GIC that earns 10% because it's make the math really easy. And the point that we want to do is look at how much money we're going to have for five years and understand the difference between simple and compound interest. So that's why we're using these numbers. So what we're going to do is set up a table here that will allow us to calculate how much money we're going to have every year of this five-year investment. So up here we see a thousand dollars is next to principal. So principal is the word we use for the amount of money that gets invested at the beginning. Okay, how much you give the bank? That's called the principal. And here we see it's ten percent per year, and we're going to do a calculation for five years. So the way it works is every year you're going to calculate interest and add it to your balance so that your bank account will grow. So in the first year, you're going to take the principal, which was $1,000 right there, and you're going to do the calculation of your interest. And we said it's 10% per year, so we need 10% of 1,000. So we take the 1,000 times the 10%, so the 0 0.10, and we get $100 of interest. So that's great. So we have our $1,000 that we've invested, plus we just earned $100, so we add those up. And our bank account now says that we have $1,100. That's great. We didn't have to do anything. We just gave our money away. The bank did the work for us. And they returned us $100 or made us $100 and put that into our bank account. We have $1,100. Now, the way simple interest works, this calculation gets repeated every year. So in simple interest, we go back and say, okay, you gave me a thousand dollars, so at a, we're going to be a thousand dollars. We're going to calculate the thousand or your interest on that same thousand dollars every time. So you're going to get another hundred dollars. Since you made another hundred dollars in year two, you add that hundred dollars to what you had before, and you end up with twelve hundred dollars. So pretty good. And then in year three. Interest is calculated on the initial investment of $1,000. Of course, you're going to earn another $100, and you'll be at $1,300. And of course, you're going to earn this $100 every year because your interest is calculated on the initial investment in simple interest. And your bank will then grow by $100 every year. So that's a nice little growth. That's uh, a linear growth. You can see the first difference here is $100. And so it's going to go up by $100 every year. So this might look great, and it is. Um, you haven't done anything. You just gave them $1,000, and you waited patiently, and you earned $100 every year. And now, after five years, you've got $1,500. So simple interest is really great. Um, it's good. It's easy to calculate. And in fact, we don't even really need this table because we know that we're calculating $100 every year. So there is a formula that would allow us to do this much quicker, because if I wanted to figure out how much we'd have to have after 20 years, I wouldn't want to make this table go to 20 years. So I'm going to use this formula. Simple interest is just invested on the principal alone. So you can calculate the total interest earned by taking your principal, multiplying it by the rate, and remember the rate changes to a decimal, times the number of years that you're there. So let's look at this different example where we invested $4,200 at 2% per year. Now, this is probably a more realistic GIC, about 2% per year for seven years. Now, it's still going to be good, but if we're calculating the interest, then we take the, our investment, which is $4,200, we multiply it by 0 0.02, which is our interest, and we're going to do this seven times because we're doing it on $4,200 every year. So we multiply it by 0 0.02 times 7, and it turns out that we make $588. So on this initial investment, after seven years, we make a total of $588 in interest. So now when we calculate how much money there is at the end of that, we're going to take our $4,200 that we invested plus the 58, or sorry, $588, add them up, and we now have $4,788 in our bank after seven years. So this is great. <clears throat> and simple interest is, is a good way to make money. Um, however, there is a second way to do the calculation, and that's used. Oh, sorry, back to this. Let's just make sure that this would work in our table. So if we use this formula, 
for our initial one, remember our GIC of $1,000 at 10% and we did it five times, that ended up being $500, right? $100 every year for five years. And then add that to our initial investment, we get $1,500. And so this matches exactly, this formula matches exactly how it worked in the table. So this is, a, uh, this is of course, quicker to be able to calculate it after five years, but it's good that it, it matched up. Now, simple interest is great, a good investment, but compound interest is another way to do this. And I would argue is a much better way when you're making an investment because in compound interest, and by the way, compound interest is more common way of calculating this. Um, it's calculated on, ins on the principal plus the interest you earn. That means you're going to earn interest on the interest. So let's see what that, how that's going to change our situation. So we're going to look at the same table. We're going to make the same investment of $1,000 at 10% per year for five years, but we're going to calculate it using compound interest instead. So let's see how it's different. So after first year, we're going to take the $1,000 that we have in our account, which are going to give us the same 10% and we're going to earn the same $100. Add that up and our bank is at $1,100 and it's in our account. That's the same as the first year of simple interest. But what is different is in simple interest, you just kept doing the calculation on your initial investment. So you just got $100 every year. The difference in compound interest is when you do your next calculation, it calculates on how much is in your bank account. And since your interest is in there, you're doing the investment on $1,100. So this is much interest, much more interesting because now when we do 10% on that, we make $110, which is just a little bit more than the hundred dollars we made in simple interest. But Hey, we haven't, we didn't do anything differently other than the interest was compounded quarterly or annually, excuse me. And it was compound interest instead of simple interest. So now when we take that $110 and add it to what we had before, we now have $1,210. So we've made $10 more than we did with simple interest and we didn't have to change anything. But now this kind of snowballs because the next year, we, again, we don't do it on 1,000. We don't do it on 1,000. We do it what's in the bank. And in the bank, we see $1,210. So when we do 10% on that, we're going to make $121 this year as opposed to the regular $100 we were making before. And we add that and we're now at $1,331. And now we make more interest on that and we do a calculation on that and we're gonna make $133.10. And it just starts to snowball into something that's really valuable. Now we're at uh, $1,464.10. Let's do the calculation on this. Multiply that by 10%, we're going to make $146.41. Add that to the year that we had before, and we're at $1,610.51. So compound interest, we do the interest on the, we calculate the interest on what's in our bank account, as opposed to simple interest, where we only calculate it on the initial investment. And we can see how compound interest is much more uh, appealing to us. In fact, if I show you the tables put together, you see in the simple interest after five years, we made $1,500, which is great. But in compound interest, we made $1,610.51. So that's a difference if we subtracted them, that's a difference of $110.51 by having compound interest calculated instead of simple interest. So we can see the advantages of compound interest. It's a significant advantage and you didn't have to change any of your investment or your investment rate. Everything's exactly the same, just how it's calculated. So compound interest is great when we're making savings or investments or something like that. The only catch is when you borrow money, it's also usually calculated with compound interest. So if you borrow a lot of money, say for example, a house, you have to pay interest on not just how much money you borrowed, but also any interest that is on top of that. 
and it gets compounded and they always calculate your interest instead of a simple interest and say, oh, you just owe us $100 a month. You might owe more based on how much percent that you have left in there and it keeps calculating it. So um, it's, it's great for investment. It'd be great. It'd be better if you could do simple investments when you're paid money off, but still compound interest is still better in the long run, which is really exciting. Now I've graphed this sort of stuff and you're going to see these types of graphs in a moment, but you can see because simple interest is linear, it goes up by the same amount. You'll notice that compound interest is nonlinear. You can't get your first differences are always different because you're adding different amounts each time. So when we're comparing the graph, the purple one is simple interest just going up by the same amount, but the nonlinear one is going to curve and start to grow. And of course, as you go on in years, that difference is gets bigger and bigger and bigger uh, to the point where we made $110. At the beginning, of course, it's the same, and it's only a small difference for a couple of years. But as this nonlinear graph goes up, it's going to be much uh, better for us. Um, so just to summarize the difference between simple and compound interest, simple interest, you're paying interest on only the principal, but compound interest, you get interest on both the principal and any interest you've earned in there. Simple interest is linear, compound interest is nonlinear, and because it's curving up, you're going to make more money with compound interest. And since it's linear, we say that the first differences are the same. Nonlinear in this case, it's a division or a multiplication, a ratio. So you actually get a percentage and it grows exponentially. Now, this is something you'll learn about later on next year. But here, all that's important is you understand that it's linear and this is nonlinear because it's nonlinear is going to grow faster and compound interest is better investment for us. So what you can do move on to now is we're going to look at this in a spreadsheet to allow us to do calculations of much longer than five years. We can go and have the computer do this in over 20 or 25 years to see how much significant, how much more significant it is that compound interest is than simple interest. Good luck.